What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking you through five supplements that I think you should be taking during your military preparation. Before we get into things, if at any point during this video you find it educational, entertaining, whatever it is, leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe down below, it helps me out and doesn't take too much of your time. So without further ado then, let's get straight in to number one. A bit of an obvious one to start with, whey protein powder. The reason we need whey protein powder, or don't need, but it makes it a little bit easier if we take it, is because it helps us reach our daily protein goal. So if you have any sort of idea about nutrition, you should be having a protein goal for the day. If you're serious about your training, you need to be having around 1.6, so 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight. So for me, I'm 75 kilos. That brings me out at around 150 grams. It's difficult to get that many grams of protein just from food. So all protein allows you to do is have a really convenient supplement that you can just take, you can take on the go with you. And it means hitting that protein target is no longer a chore and it's actually made pretty easy and pretty convenient. Why is it useful for military prep then? So obviously during military preparation, we should be doing some level of resistance training. That resistance training is gonna break down our muscles. The protein powder and the protein goal, the daily protein goal, is gonna allow us to regen our muscles a little bit and recover for that next session. So number two then, and again, if you've been following this channel or my content for any length of time, you'll know I'm a big fan of creatine monohydrate. So creatine monohydrate is the one you need. You don't need creatine, whatever whatever the other supplements are. Creatine monohydrate is the only one you need. So what does creatine do? So our bodies actually store creatine already, and it's found in any sort of animal product in small amounts. When you actually supplement extra creatine, it gets stored in the muscles and converted into phosphocreatine. That phosphocreatine is then used in the muscle, stored in the muscle as ATP. ATP is what we use to replenish energy during a short, sharp burst of exercise. So whether it be a 100 meter sprint, a big set of back squats, deadlift in the gym, something like a start of a 1.5 mile run, anything that you're gonna be doing to get yourself stronger and get yourself faster is gonna be aided through the use of creatine. How do we take it? We take five grams every single day, consistently with no breaks, ideally. Don't worry about a loading phase, okay? You don't really need to load it into the muscles. The creatine is a saturation supplement, so we need to take it regularly and every day. Five grams tends to be enough. It can take more. However, that's only if you're a really big guy with massive muscles, so bigger than me, you'll, you'll need maybe eight grams, but five grams a day for the most part is gonna be ideal. So the fallout from having creatine in your supplement stack or in your diet is that those initial reps in the gym or that, that initial burst of energy on a run or whatever is gonna be a little bit easier, a little bit more efficient, meaning that you can push a little bit harder on the back end of that set or the back end of that run, which in turn is gonna allow you to yield a better training effect, essentially. So we're gonna get more out of our training by taking creatine. You will have to stop taking all these supplements at the end of training, but we'll talk about that in the end of the video. Okay, our next supplement then, so number three is beta alanine. Bit of a curveball, this one. You might not have heard of it. It's an amino acid. Essentially what it does in layman's terms is block lactic acid for a little bit. So lactic acid, obviously the buildup of which is gonna make you feel tired. It's what, when you run a 5K best effort, it's what builds up in the muscles to stop you running any further or any faster. So if we can block that or buffer that at any point, then we're gonna be able to push again further into that kind of red zone, push further into that intensity to yield a better training effect. This supplement is again a saturation supplement, so you can't really just take it as and when and expect it to work. So I would advise taking a serving size, so it's tiny scoop with your creatine when you're training. So if you're training regularly, take it before that session. Uh, you're gonna, gonna reap the benefits from that. What you will feel from beta alanine, as it's uh, an ingredient in pre-workouts sometimes, is a little tingling sensation around your neck and around your ears. That's normal, okay? Don't think that you're kind of growing some funky stuff around your face. It's normal to experience that. That's kind of what it does. You will 
stop experiencing that sort of side effect as you go through, as you, as you, as you take it more and more. Just be careful that you don't take it every single day because then you'll build up a tolerance to it and obviously then it won't have as much effect. The beta alanine in pre-workouts often isn't ideal in terms of the dosage. They often just put a little tiny bit in because it's cheaper and it's going to give you the tingles so you'll feel like it's doing something. So my advice would be to just buy it straight from source, whether in a powder form or a, or a tablet form and take it when, you, when, you, when you're training. Supplement number four then, getting there now. So number four is all about sleep. Okay, so magnesium three and eight. Ensure it's magnesium three and eight. There are a lot of shit supplements out there to do with magnesium, zinc, sleep. Okay, it's a massive industry now, so there's loads of stuff on the market. Make sure you get magnesium three and eight. So what does magnesium three and eight do then? So it's been shown to help sleep quality so i know what you're like you're going to be saying yeah i'm in bed for eight hours that must mean i get eight hours sleep okay it's obviously not the case when we get into bed we're messing around we're fucking on our phones we're reading whatever we're doing before we actually fall asleep the time in bed and the time asleep is completely different so what we need to look to do is maximize that time that we are asleep by making it of higher quality that magnesium three and eight is going to play into that the other thing it does is help with melatonin production. Melatonin is the hormone associated with falling asleep or feeling drowsy, feeling sleepy. So it can help to regulate your sleep-wake rhythms or circadian rhythms. Last but not least then, number five is some sort of electrolyte supplement. So the only ones that I've found that actually work and actually feel like they do anything is element electrolytes or LMNT electrolytes. I'll put the photo of them here. So even if your hydration levels are good in terms of taking on a lot of water, if your sodium and potassium levels aren't high, then you're not gonna be optimally hydrated. And that's obviously gonna play into the session quality and getting cramps early on in a run or whatever it may be it can affect your concentration. So not being optimally hydrated for a session cannot be overlooked. So having something in your toolkit like an element electrolyte tablet or sachet is amazing. Okay, it makes things so much easier. It means you don't just have to chug salt, which one isn't very good for you, and two isn't really, really that pleasant. Element electrolytes are really, really good. What I What I'd recommend is for you to have them first thing in the morning. So as soon as you wake up, before coffee, before anything else, have sort of 500 milliliters of water to 750, depending on how you like it, with Elements Electrolytes in it. That's gonna set you up really well for the day. It's also gonna replenish all of your electrolytes from being asleep, okay, and, and sweating through the night. Also, a little note on electrolytes. If you're gonna have them pre-training or during training, my advice is to have the 90 minutes out from any sort of longer endurance run. All that's gonna do is boost blood volume, which means your circulation is just gonna be a little bit better. And that training session is one, gonna be a little bit easier, and you're gonna be more efficient on it, which again is gonna play out as more output, and therefore more results on the back end. Okay, so I'm just gonna answer the question that you're all probably asking already in the comments. You probably already sent your comment. Can you take supplements with you to training and can you continue to take them during that period? The answer, unfortunately, as far as I know, is no. I don't think they allow that. They certainly didn't when I went through training. I remember them supplementing some lads with protein shakes if they needed to put on weight, if they'd fallen under the weight requirement, but that was all done in-house and all done by the medical staff on base, you can't very well take your own electrolytes or your own creatine or your own protein powder and put it in your locker and have it every day. If they don't find out, they don't find out, that's up to you to, to risk. I'm not gonna tell you either way. However, if they do find out, it's probably not gonna be pretty. The reason being that they need to be insured on everything, I think, so everything they give you and everything they put into your body officially has to be ratified and has to be official from the galley or whatever from the cookhouse so you taking your own random supplements because people could take anything and the, you know there's no real there's no real rules on what people could take in then that could be obviously a problem
The other thing to note then, if you're finishing training or you have finished training, is just to make sure that all of the supplements you take are on the Inform Sport website. So Inform Sport website looks like this. If your supplement brand isn't on that, it can come up on a drugs test, okay, which is obviously the last thing you need to be kicked out of the core for taking creatine from a shit source. So make sure before you buy anything that it's on this website. It's also important to note that these supplements do absolutely jack shit without good nutrition, first of all, good sleep, first of all, good training, first of all. So we need these pillars in place first before we start looking to supplements to see if we can optimize things. So the things that we need to have in place, job done is a good training program, a good sleep routine, so a good night routine before we go to sleep, decent nutrition, so 70 to 80% of your nutrition coming from whole foods. And then after you've got all that sorted out, then we can start to look to these supplements, the supplements that I've been through there that can have some benefit, we can start to look to them. If you don't sort the big fundamental things out before looking to supplements, it's almost like you've got a flat tire in your car and you get out a masking tape over it rather than changing the tire or pumping it up. So make sure that you've got everything sorted out before you start to look to supplements. If you're already in a good place, then make sure we're looking at these supplements that I've mentioned because they will be return on investment positive for you. Hope that video has been of some use to you. If it has, click the link below for military programming and make sure you hit subscribe for more videos like this. Peace.